Wow, what a gorgeous looking aircraft. Once again, welcome to my channel. Thank you for checking out this video. As you can see in the title, today we'll be doing a low visibility approach into London Heathrow. Now, we're a little bit east of Lambourne and uh, we're just being told that we have to enter the Lambourne holding. To program this in the FMS, you have to press the left line select key at the Lambourne fix. Then on the next page, you press the hold prompt on the left side. Unfortunately, the stored holding pattern is uh, wrong and so we have to correct it manually. So according to the chart, we have a 264 inbound course with left turns. After pressing insert on the right bottom line select key, the new holding pattern is established. So now we are reducing uh, to holding speed in order to save fuel. Normally air traffic control will give you an expected uh, approach time, but uh, today we've been told that we only have to expect uh, one holding pattern. So now we're just receiving the ATIS and uh, we'll be putting that into our performance page. Since we are doing a Category 3 Bravo approach, we have no decision height. So we're typing no and uh, putting that into the box of the decision height. No decision height is then also displayed on the FMA. On the Ratnav page we'll be selecting London VOR. So since we have a little time on our hands, um, I'm gonna talk you through some special aspects of a low visibility approach. First of all, we have to check a few things. For example, both crew members have to be properly trained for the low visibility approach. Also, the aircraft shouldn't have any technical defects, which would restrict the approach capability. And of course, all the equipment at the airport has to work perfectly. Things like the ILS beam, the lights on the runway, monitoring system of the ILS system, etc. etc. But since London Heathrow is a modern and very well maintained airport, there's no problems today. Before we do the approach briefing, we're just going to monitor the autopilot to make sure it intercepts the holding pattern properly. Now that we're entering the holding pattern, I'm going to reduce the descent rate to a maximum of 1000 feet a minute. This is just to avoid a TCAS alert if there's an aircraft below us. Now that we're established in the holding pattern, we can start the approach briefing. I'll first brief the ILS approach and thereafter I'll be talking about the special aspects of the low visibility approach. The minimum sector altitude around London is uh, 2100 feet. For the mist approach the sector is 2200 feet. The initial altitude is 2500 feet. The descent point at 7.5 ILS DME. That's the point where the glide slope intercepts our initial altitude. The glide slope has a profile of 3 degrees and the localizer inbound course is 271 degrees. The final altitude will be checked at 4 DME and is 1410 feet. There is no decision height and uh, so all that is required are the RVR values. RVR stands for runway visual range and that has to be 75 meters along our required landing field length. 
In case of missed approach, we will be proceeding straight ahead 271 degrees, either 1580 feet or 0 DME before India Romeo Romeo, whichever is later. Then we'll turn right, adding 318 and climbing 3000 feet. Roger, Virgin 225, descending level 80. So now let's talk about the special aspects of our autopilot flight director system. In order to fly the CAT3 Bravo approach, we have to have CAT3 Dual displayed on the FMA later on. This can be only achieved when using both autopilots for the approach. So once we are cleared for the approach, you'll see me activating the second autopilot and then I'll be checking the CAT3 dual annunciation on the flight mode annunciator, the FMA. Should there be a downgrade of the approach capability and uh, should the required visual range not be good enough, we will have to do a missed approach. Once the autopilot has intercepted the localizer and the glide slope, the approach is uh, just like a normal ILS approach. Since the autopilot will do the landing fully automatic, we have to monitor the whole system very carefully. At about 400 feet, the FMA glide slope and localizer mode will change to the combined mode land. This means that the localizer and glide slope is locked and the only way to get out of the approach mode is to perform a go around or to switch off the autopilot of course. Um, next up we'll be getting a clearance to leave the holding. That means the autopilot will disregard the holding pattern and continue on the programmed arrival route. Virgin 225 will disregard the holding and will leave Lambourne heading 271 degrees. Okay, before that clearance I was explaining how the glide slope and localizer mode changes into a combined land mode. After that, once uh, 50 feet is announced, you will see the land mode change to flare mode. That means that the autopilot is now using its flare program to adjust the rate of descent and is trying to achieve a uh, proper touchdown. At around uh, 30 feet thrust idle is shown on the uh, auto thrust uh, part of the FMA and the auto thrust system will command idle thrust. Just before touchdown you will hear the voice say retard, retard, retard. At this point you have to pull the thrust levers to the idle position. That disconnects the auto thrust. And then after touchdown you will see the FMA announce roll out. Virgin 2 to 5, maintaining speed 210 knots. Now the rollout mode is uh, quite a unique feature because the autopilot system will use the steering, the nose with steering, to maintain the uh, runway centerline. So the autopilot system remains active even after touchdown. That also means that if you want to leave the runway, you will have to switch off both autopilots. Roger, Virgin 2 to 5, descending 4000 feet, QNH 1010. Alright, so next let's talk about the unique features of the autopilot system. As long as CAT3 Dual is displayed, we have a so-called fail operational automatic landing system. And that means should one of the autopilot systems fail, the other system allows the aircraft to complete the approach, flare and the landing. Virgin 2 to 5, turning left, heading 180. If only CAT3 single is displayed on the FMA, 
then we have a fail passive automatic landing system. That simply means that if the autopilot fails, uh, automatic landing is not possible. So you as the pilot would have to take immediate control of the aircraft. You may have asked yourself, if you put in no decision height in the uh, FMS, how do you know at what point to say continue or go around? Now this is solved in the following manner. When the automatic callout 100 feet is announced and all systems work normally, you as a pilot would say continue. Virgin 2 to 5, descent 3000 feet. The 100 feet callout equals the so called alert height. That simply means that should any failures occur before alert height, you would perform a go around. Now, as you can imagine, the autopilot flight director system is uh, very carefully monitored internally. And so, should there be any faults below 200 feet AGL, an auto land warning light will illuminate. The warning light is just above the primary flight display. This light will illuminate, for example, when uh, both autopilots fail, the localizer or glide slope exceeds certain values, or if the signal of the localizer and glide slope is lost completely, and if there should be a difference between both radio altimeters of more than 15 feet. Flaps 1. Okay, so just to recap. Above 1000 feet ground, should there be a failure, you can try to do the ECAM procedure, uh, try a reset of the system, and uh, if that doesn't work, then you would have to go around. Virgin 225, descent 2500 feet. Virgin 2 to 5, turning right, heading 235, and we are cleared the category 3 approach to 7 right. Okay, so now that we're cleared for the approach, I'll press the approach mode button on the FCU and then activate the second autopilot. The FMA is showing cut 3 dual. And to make it simple, let's just say that above the alert height, should there be any failures, or should you have the uh, feeling that something's not going the way it is supposed to be, then the safest course of action is to just go around. And so below the alert height, so below 100 feet AGL, you would go around only for the Outland warning light, um, no flare indication at uh, 30 feet, or if the anti-skid or the nose wheel steering fails before touchdown. And of course you would also go around if air traffic control is uh, telling you to do so. Now I know there's some professional pilots uh, watching this video as well. And before you put anything in the comment section, um, I know there's a lot more reasons uh, to go around. But I can't allow the video to get uh, too complicated. Alright, so we've uh, intercepted the localizer. The glide slope is just coming up. So let's concentrate on flying the approach. Glide slope star. Flaps 2. Virgin 225 Roger will contact tower on 118.50. 7.5 TE from the ILS. Descent point is checked. Gear down. Good morning, Tower. This is Virgin 225, ILS 27 right. Continue approach, Virgin 225. 
all the reported RVRs are above the required 75 meters. Flaps 3. Flaps full. 2000. Checking the VLS on the primary flight display. Should the VLS on the primary flight display be more than the one calculated by the FMS, you have to increase the V approach speed in the FMS by the difference of the two values. Right, a landing checklist, landing no blue. Before we get to the critical part of the approach, let's have a look again at the uh, list showing the sequence of annunciation. Virgin 225, Glitterland 27 right. 1000. Checked. Land three hundred two hundred one hundred fifty four flare thirty twenty. 10. Retard. Retard. Rollout. Spoilers. Reverse green diesel. Seventy knots. Auto brake is off. Autopilot's off. As you can see, the visibility is uh, pretty bad. And that's uh, what makes these low visibility operations so sophisticated. There is uh, simply just no margin for error. Okay, so this concludes the video. Um, I hope I've uh, cleared up a few questions. If not, or if you still have some questions, uh, please comment in the section below. Thank you. And as always, if you've liked the video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. That just uh, leaves me to say uh, one more thing. Thank you very much for all your positive feedback, the nice comments, the good questions and uh, all your support in general. It uh, really means a lot to me. So I'm wishing you happy landings. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.